Today I'm going to show you guys how to transform someone's body in Photoshop. Hey guys and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace and you can find us on Twitter at Flurn. We're going to make learning photography and Photoshop a lot of fun for you. We got a really cool episode today. We're basically taking our subject and we're going to be stretching her out. We're going to do this in a way where it's not going to look super stretched out. It's going to look, it should look relatively natural, more on like the fashion side of natural, but we're not going to stretch her face out and everything like that. We're going to do some color work and things as well. So this technique is something that you can do on just about any one of your photo shoots. It's going to work really well if your subject is standing up and if they're wearing uh, clothes so you don't have to worry about stretching individual limbs and things like that. So let's go ahead and get into that. You're going to like it. Cool. So this is our image for today. This is uh, shot by Kaylee Kay here in Chicago and this is uh, Precious Little. I've actually photographed her before. She's awesome. What we're going to be doing is stretching out uh, this image and I'm going to go over, before we start, I'm going to go over a couple of like the w reasons why I'm going to stretch this out and uh, how this image is going to be made easy and if you guys are doing other images I'm going to give you some tips and things like that. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to stretch the model but really when you're working with something like that you don't want to like mess with someone's face because if their face gets stretched out it's going to look horrible. But if you make someone's arms a little bit longer or legs a little bit longer usually it's you won't even be able to tell and usually it's just going to look a little bit better especially in a photo. So we're going to take basically from here down and we're going to stretch this straight down. To do so I want to add a little bit more space to our canvas down here. Now this image is it's pretty like on the natural slash organic side. I mean, we've got a road and some trees and things like that. So if I do happen to like stretch the road in some way or another, uh, it's not going to be that noticeable really because it's just kind of like a blah shape. Like there's no real structure to this image. Um, if you're photographing someone and they were in like a room sitting on a chair or like, you know, in front of a brick wall, if you stretch the person out, the background would stretch out as well. So in this, I'm not really worried about cutting the subject out from the background, but if you did have something where the background had a lot of structure to it, uh, you would want to cut your subject out from the background first. Okay, let's go ahead and get into it. So we're going to like stretch her out. I'm just going to make a uh, duplicate of this background layer. So we're going to hit Command J, duplicate our background layer, and then I'm going to grab my crop tool. So C for the crop tool, and I just want to add some pixels down here to the bottom. And this is really cool. If you're in the crop tool, you can just click right here, down here on the bottom and pull down just like that and hit enter. And there we go. We've got some more space down there. Okay, so we've got two layers, basically the, the exact same now. We're going to grab our marquee tool, the rectangular marquee, and I'm not going to select out just her. So I'm going to actually stretch the background, but it's not going to be that noticeable. So we're going to, let's just zoom out a little bit here so we can see. Starting right about here, all right, from like the waist on down. There we go. We're going to make that a selection, and I'm going to hit Command T to transform what's in that selection. And if I just click right here on the bottom and drag this down, there we go. Right like that, and hit Enter. We're good to go. So what it does is it, it'll keep continuity, like the top part of the image will basically stay the same, and the, the bottom gets stretched out more and more and more. So here's this with on and off. And you can see the background, like if someone was just looking at this, they wouldn't be like, oh, that looks stretched. It, it really doesn't make that big of a difference uh, when it is stretched. Okay, so that's the start. Next thing we're going to do is go to our Lookify tool and just give this a little bit more of like some shape in her actual dress. So on the same layer, or you can hit Command J if you want to duplicate the layer in case you're worried about messing up. Uh, we're going to go to Filter and then down here to uh, Liquify. And this is where we're actually going to give the dress a bit of shape. So I'm going to start off with a fairly large brush and just kind of like give the dress and her body a little bit, little bit more shape. Let's bring our pressure up so we can kind of push and pull these things. Um, generally, when you're working with look, the Liquify tool, I find that using an opacity that's or sorry, a, uh, your brush size, you want to generally have it like a little bit larger than you might think you need your brush size. Um, it's, it'll help it look a little bit more natural, especially when you're trying to like push and pull and get some like body movement and whatnot. Um, there we go. Give her like a knee. Um, if you go in here with a really small brush, it tends to create like little indents and dimples and things like that, which just makes it look like a lot more um, it makes it look like almost bumpy, but so if you use a large brush, you can move like a large area at the same time and it will seem, uh, it'll seem like a little less fake basically. All right, there we go. So I'm just kind of like, you know, giving her a little bit of a butt here and kind of like pulling that out and uh, you're giving a little bit of a knee and things like that, especially, you know, because we've given quite a bit of length to the, to the, her overall shape. I just want to make sure that um, we're not, we're not really 
making it just look like a, a flat peg. Like that's not what we want, right? Okay, and we're just gonna pull this out here. And again, I'm not looking for something super unrealistic. This is like on the fashion side of things. And when you're looking through Vogue's and you know things like that, I mean, just about everyone's been stretched around and contorted and stuff like that. So um, this might seem like really extreme, but it's every single magazine image you see just about has something like this going on. Um, I'm also gonna fix her hair. The liquify tool is actually a really great tool for just playing with people's hair, like just kind of like stretching it out and things like that. Uh, you can take care of flyaway hairs by clicking from the outside and uh, bringing it in and then kind of coming back out again. All right, there we go. That looks pretty good. Let's zoom out here. And um, I'm even gonna make her dress like a little bit bigger. So we're gonna choose a large brush and we're gonna just kind of fan her dress out a little bit. All right, and this is, again, like you wouldn't wanna do this on every single image you edit, but this is the type of image that, you know, it's supposed to like be, hey, draw attention to me. This is, you know, it's the type of image that really will, does lend itself well to this, uh, this type of editing. But if you're shooting like a, a family portrait or something like that, or an engagement session, there's no reason you should do this. Okay, there we go, that looks pretty good. So we're gonna hit okay. And we can see there's the results of the Lookify tool. So it's just kind of like takes it from being like a strat, a flat, like peg, stick, whatever, um, to just giving it a little bit more shape. And again, you can see the background, like the ground and stuff does get transformed, but it doesn't look that transformed because it's, it's just a, like a, a sh random blob of some shapes. Okay, next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna go ahead and give it a little bit of coloring. So I'm gonna color the background and color the foreground just to make sure that they kind of, uh, I want them to play off each other a little bit better. So we're gonna go to our levels adjustment layer and we're gonna start off with the background. So I'm gonna go to my red channel, and click on our output channel, just going from the right down to the left and we'll grab our green channel as well. Okay, and now what I wanna do is kinda of like gradient this from the background to the foreground. So I'm gonna hit command I on the layer mask and then G for my gradient tool. We're gonna to go to our linear gradient and I'm gonna just click here and go from the top down, just like that. Maybe I'll come down just a little bit more. There we go. So it just kind of like gives a, you know, like a push from the back to the front. Um, just the other thing we need to do is just make sure this is not visible on our subject. So instead of working with this layer mask that we're already on, I'm just gonna group this layer with itself and then make a layer mask on that. And uh, the reason I do it is because it will, it'll keep my layer mask from looking, um, it'll keep it from getting messed up. So I'm gonna hit Command G and then we're gonna put a layer mask on that layer and then I'm gonna paint black on the layer mask. So it's still doing the same thing as if I just painted black on the layer mask of the other layer, but I'm gonna show you in a second why I did that group. It, that's actually kind of an important step. All right, let's say we're masking and then like, we like you know mess up and we go out here. If I paint this back visible, it's gonna paint back visible on this layer mask, but it's not gonna mess up my gradient. So like if I was painting on this layer mask and I painted I made a mess up or something like that and I went to go paint white at 100%. Can you see how my gradient is kind of gone? It'll, it'll be more apparent if I just make this like a little bit brighter, but there we go, or darker. You can see the overall gradient is gone if I like try to go back and fix it. So it's better to like take the gradient, take care of that in one layer mask and then group it and then take care of your other uh, layer masking on the layer mask for the group. I hope that's clear. It's one of those things that's like words kind of don't really do it justice, but um, if you're looking at it and you're like, okay, cool, um, that's, that's good, that's the whole idea. So by making the background a little bit on the blue side and a little bit on the like darker side, it's just gonna help our subject stand out a little bit better. All right, almost done there. And now we're basically gonna do the opposite. So I'm gonna make another levels adjustment layer and we're gonna go, we're gonna grab this and make it a little bit brighter there we go, we're gonna take our red channel and I'm gonna put a little bit of red in there and grab our blue channel and pull that to the right. And we're gonna put a little less blue. Okay, we're gonna hit Command I again and then I'm gonna paint this visible on our subject. We can always go back and change the coloring and things like that, but um, I use complementary colors quite a bit when I wanna like draw attention to a particular part of an image and um, blue in the background and then like a Nice orange uh, on our subject is just gonna be a nice way to draw that attention. All right. There we go, and just kinda adjust those a little bit. So again, not like a huge change, but you can see it really does make a difference um, drawing your subject size. 
All right, let's go to our blue channel. We'll put a little bit more yellow in there. There we go. All right, and just make our brush a little bit better so it kind of fades out there. We want it to look relatively natural. Okay, and there we go. So here's our, uh, what the background did. You can see just kind of helped to isolate her a little bit more, and then we warmed her up a little bit. So there's the uh, before and the after with the color work. All right, and then let's just go ahead and look at the original image. So this is the original image. And you can see, she's not like a short model or anything like that. But afterwards, it's like, oh, it, it does look quite a bit different. So this is the before, and that's the after. And I maybe exaggerated uh, her a little bit much. But you get the idea. You can tone it back as you want. <laughs> uh, I'm sure this is going to cause all kind of controversy out there. But anyway, this is how it's done if you want to uh, make your subject stand out. So anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching Flurn. We hope you enjoyed this episode. Uh, leave us a note. Tell us down below. What do you guys think of this? Is this something, a technique that you would actually use? Do you want to see us doing other techniques to like work on people's bodies, things like that? Let us know in a comment down below. And if you guys like these videos, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and share them with your friends. Thanks so much for watching Flurn, guys, and uh, we'll flirt you later.